Hey there folks. So in this video, what we're going to be looking at is how we can use the distance between two points or two groups of point information in order to obviously set some kind of density or to at least control it for filtering out of values and choosing what we do. So what you can see here is I've just um, used the previous examples that we've done in terms of creating a point grid and spawning it around the actor locations of these um, little kind of goblin war huts. And what you can see is I've got a density value that's been applied to these, but the further they get away, the brighter they're going to get. So this density changes from zero all the way through to one. And as these move around, as they close into each other, if I was to put in a couple more of them, you could see that those that are closer to buildings are going to be dark. Those that are further away or over a certain value are going to be lighter. So let's look at how we can do that. And then obviously we can start looking at as well how we can use that to maybe control the filtering so we can have things that are you know different when they're further away from us versus very close up to the building itself. OK, so I'm here inside the PCG graph and you can see I've, the last thing I've done is this projection, which is what actually just makes all of these points appear on the floor. I did in previous examples have an attribute noise that I added. I've just removed it for the purposes here just so I can show you that everything has no density applied to it right now. And we're going to use the distance in order to create that. Now, distance is very easy to find. I'm just going to right click and search for a node called distance. And here, if I plug this in, we've got two options. We've got the source, which is the points that we're going to be modifying. And then we've got the target, which is the thing that we're checking our distance against. So each one of our points, each one of the points that goes into source is going to check their distance from the target points that's being fed through. So let's plug this in. You can see there's a little bit of a conversion for me there in terms of the point information. Turns it back to points for me. I'm going to turn this off so now it's debugging i can't see any effect and that's because obviously i haven't told it what to target but i do have this named reroute for my building actor location and um, points so let's apply that and now what we should be able to see is that if we had these values turned on correctly this would be showing the density well i haven't got set density turned on so let's turn it on everything goes black well why does everything go black well, that's because of this maximum distance value and the maximum distance decides that its default value is going to be 20,000. So anything over that value or, or anything under that value is going to end up being outside of this range. It's going to be a really, really dark um, black kind of value. It's a zero. They've all gone black. So what we might need to do is just maybe take a zero out and see what happens. Perfect. We can start seeing some gray there. So we know that we're going in the right direction. Maybe we halve this and go from 2000 down to 1000 and we can now start seeing a much, much lighter grays coming in here. And this is one of those ones where it's about messing around with the values, finding what works for you. In future videos, we will look at how to output these values here into variables that we can use and parameters we can control. But for now, you can see 800 matches up pretty well. We've nearly when it's 800 away, we've nearly got a full range from black all the way through to white. Where are we getting this value from? Why is this 800 working nicely? Well, let's all go all the way back to our create points grid and think we're creating points anywhere within this 800 by 800 grid square. And obviously we're checking here and saying, if we're looking at this individual starting point here from the get actor data, and these points are spread out anywhere up to 800, well, that's gonna give us a nice little distance range to work within. Another thing you can do is you can actually press A to check the um, the inspection of this, expand it and have a look at the graph. And we're already familiar with things like position X, Y and Z, the uh, role and everything. But if we go all the way to the end, after all the landscape data that I've got from the projection now, you'll see that there is an option now for the distance. And this is going to tell me what the distance is for each of those. Yeah, So I can see how far away are any of these points from the main central point that they are working on. Yeah, so it's looking and saying for any of these points, what is the value they're gonna be? Now, a couple of other options that we can do with this, we could also tick this output distance vector. When that's not ticked on, you can see that distance as a value is just a single float value. So you can see a scalar, it's gonna be one simple number, number here, and that's just gonna give us a value of distance. Whereas if we tick this, you'll see that my inspector now changes 
and I've not only just got the distance as one value, I've got the distance X, Y, and Z. So it's going to tell me each one of these, which could be useful. You know, if you want to have a look at each of these individual points and say, how far away am I on the Z value? Maybe I want to filter out things that are too far down and have moved away because, you know, I might be getting all these points around here projecting onto the landscape, but because of steep cliffs and hills, maybe they're much, much lower down on the floor. I could um, actually filter out based on their distance. I can also use this obviously for filtering out things um, now into things like the size. I can filter out to only have certain objects when they're close or when they're far away. But it's a really useful node for us to use. And we'll actually come back to this in the future when we look at splines, because we could use this with the splines edge and the splines interior points to actually kind of scale and control the filtering and density of points inside of a spline region. So not just saying, oh, anything inside the spline has a density applied to it. We can look how close something is to the exterior edge of that spline. So it's a very useful, useful thing to do. And we could use this here if we start comparing it to, you know, our previous examples where we've got this just block of forest. We can now start using this distance to see how far away it is from the outskirts of this, how far away it is from the center, making sure that, you know, the middle of a forest maybe is more dense and more tall. And as it goes further away, maybe it fades off. It's smaller objects, smaller trees, and maybe a little bit more um, sparsity and scarcity to them as they spread around. But distance is going to let you know the distance between multiple points. We can set the density and you can see obviously that density is being applied to my points, which can go back to all the stuff we've done before, like filtering. And we can change this maximum distance value here to control what the fall off of that's going to be. So you want to have more or less, you just change that density to either favor things closer or further away. Thanks for watching, folks. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing to access more of my Unreal Engine content. Thank <laughs> you.